welcome to video number four in the email marketing rainmaker series. This video is going to be about how to write emails that sell. My formula for writing emails that sell. So here's where we're at in the series. We're in video number four. We have only one more video to go after this. I hope you guys are getting value out of this so far. If this is the first video that you're seeing, there should be three other videos before this linked somewhere on the side here that you can watch uh, before or after this video. So here's what I'm going to cover today. First, the three things that you must know before writing any email. And knowing these three things is going to make it a lot easier and a lot faster with less stress and overwhelm writing these emails, right? So, so many people just try to sit down and they try to wordsmith it from scratch and they try to come up with all these fancy words and copywriting. But if you know these three things, it's going to make your life so much easier when you're typing out these emails. Number two is the six step formula for writing emails that sell. 15 rapid fire tips for writing emails that sell, how to get free email copywriting lessons. I'm gonna show you that at the end, ways that you can get free email copywriting lessons and study the greats. So the three things that you must know before writing any email. Number one is the who. So who are you targeting? Who is the target market that you are emailing? Very important that you know who you're speaking to, especially if you have different types of people on your list. The why, why are you emailing them? What is the purpose? Why should they care about what you have to say in that email? What, what do you want them to do next? So after reading your email, what action do you want them to take? So here's an example, the who, service-based business owners who want more clients. The why is to show them how to get high ticket clients using LinkedIn. The what is after the video, I want them to click to watch a YouTube video I made on exactly how to do that, getting high ticket clients using LinkedIn. So very simple example. But if you have these three things, and I have a post-it note right here on my computer, it says the who, the why, the what, and it says on the bottom here, the point, the point I wanna make with my email. If you have these three things, writing the email itself becomes so much easier. You have like direction, you have clarity, you know where you're going with the email. You're not just guessing. Okay, so let's dive into the actual formula of writing the email right now. This is a six part formula for writing emails that sell. Number one is the subject line. So this is your headline. This is what your reader sees in their inbox. So this should be dripping with curiosity and curiosity is what's gonna get the open, right? So curiosity, 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 that's what you wanna focus on with your subject lines is don't reveal all like within your subject line. Like one of my best performing emails, the subject line is just canceled. That's, they're going to be like, what's canceled? What's going on here? So I'll show you some examples in a second here. If your email isn't opened, nothing else matters, right? If they send it to the trash or they click spam or they just don't open it, nothing else matters. So you, you could have the best copy in the world in your email, but if it doesn't get opened, then nothing matters. So you want to have good subject lines. Number two is the lead. So this is the first one to three sentences of your email. The lead needs to grab your reader's attention and get them to read the next line. I'm going up here, you should be going down. <laughs> so the first one to three sentences, again, I'll show you examples of all these, uh, but that's part two. The meat, this is the purpose and the why of your email. So you can use stories, you can share some tips or tricks or insights, those work well in the meat or like the body of your email. The transition, so the transition connects the meat, the body of your email to the call to action. And transitions, they're a little tricky. You're gonna have to practice this and you get better at it over time. But it transitions from the purpose of the email to the action that you want to take next. And when you get really good at this, right, these transitions, you can take two things that are like not related at all, like let's say broccoli and growing an online business, and you can connect those two things with this transition, right? Uh, I, I can't even think of a way to do that right now, but that's, you get so good at this that you can connect two seemingly unrelated things to each other and you can tie all these stories together. Number five is the call to action. Tell them what to do next. Be very clear about that. So check out your product page, book a call, read this article, watch this video, register for this webinar. Be very clear with your call to action. And number six is the PS. So this restates the meat or the body of the email in a different way than re-invites them to the call to action. So let's go through each of these parts now and break it down and show you examples of each of these. The subject line, so curiosity, again, is a secret sauce here. You want your subject line to, if you've ever had that unscratchable itch, right? It feels like it's on your back and you try to scratch it and it's not there and you try to go down here and you can't get rid of it. That's what you wanna think about with your subject lines. So you wanna create that unscratchable itch that they can only get rid of by opening your email, okay? Curiosity is the key here. So some examples. This one thing is more contagious than COVID-19. 
They're like, what? What one thing? I want to know what that is, right? The internet multimillionaire who works 10 minutes per day. They're like, what? How does he only work 10 minutes per day and make multi-million dollars per year? So they have to open it, right? Uh, the butcher's secret to sales. And I should go back and say this. You need to know your market, right? This is not going to work for uh, obviously every market. It depends on who your market is, your niche is, and who you're emailing. That's why it's so important to know the who, right? The butcher's secret to sales. How to get clients on LinkedIn without being salesy. This is like a timeless formula here. How to get result that they want, want without thing that they hate, right? How to get clients on LinkedIn is the thing they want without being salesy, right? They hate feeling salesy or sleazy. The biggest lie in email marketing, right? The biggest lie, the truth exposed, this revealed, right? Those subject lines always do well because it's just, it's like power words and it gets people gets people's attention and it gets them curious, right? That's why you see all these news stations always using those types of headlines. Why content is not king. So this is like going against the grain, right? It's like, it's counterintuitive to what mo most people are taught. Like content is king, post more value, post this. If you say something that is complete opposite of what is the norm out there and you follow up on that promise with your subject line within your body, uh, that's going to get their attention, right? People are going to wonder like if it's, they're used to seeing that content is king and they see why content is not king, they're going to be like, what is this guy talking about? And they're going to open up the email. So as you can see here, all curiosity based subject lines here. So that is the subject line. Now let's talk about the lead. So the lead is the first one to three sentence. The first one to three sentences of your email, they're crucial, right? It should be congruent with your subject line. So you want to hook the reader in and get them to continue reading each line. So here's some examples. There's an internet mentor of mine who makes millions per year working just 10 measly minutes per day. Here's what his day looks like. So this builds on the internet multimillionaire subject line. Have you ever felt sleazy trying to get clients on LinkedIn? Well, it doesn't have to be that way. Here's what to do without feeling like a slimy salesperson, right? So that's the, the LinkedIn subject line that follows up on that. Last night, Jackie and I had a couple of prime cut ribeyes chefed up on my Blackstone griddle. This was my first time buying a prime cut steak from a local butcher. And let me tell you, the butcher sold the shite out of that meat. Here's how it went. Uh, so this is more of a story driven one. That's actually not how I began this. Uh, it was actually the first sentence was, this is effing fantastic because I was, basically saying the first words that came out of my mouth when I ate that steak. And this is the butcher's secret to sales uh, subject line follow-up or lead. So that was the lead. The first one to three sentences, you want to hook them in. You want to follow up on the subject line. It should be congruent with that and get them interested, get them reading each line. The meat. So this is the body of your email, the purpose and the why of your email stories, tips, tricks, insights work well here. So I'm just going to read this to you. Okay. So here's what his day looks like. This is the internet multimillionaire email that did very well for our sales. Number one, he wakes up, takes his dog on a three hour walk along the beach and listens to audiobooks. Number two, he writes an email to his list selling one of his products, info products, books, or membership. Number three, he writes fiction novels for fun the rest of the day. Sometimes on his three hour walks, he shoots short videos on business that he packages up as products to sell. Mr. X has no team, no paid ads to eat into his costs, not even social media accounts. Just him, his computer, his email list, and his products. This is a fantastic example of a business that is low cost, high profit, high impact, and ultra scalable. If you want to take this to eight figures, he easily could. Now, if that isn't a dream lifestyle, I don't know what it is. And if it seems familiar, it's because yes, I'm working towards having my business structured the same way. Why am I telling you this? To show you that a successful business doesn't need to be this huge, complicated, cash eating monster that people think it is. You don't need to hustle till your eyes bleed. You don't need to make a huge investment to get started. And you don't have to sacrifice every waking hour to work on your business. You just need some direction, some skills, some elbow grease and consistency on the daily actions that will put cash in your pockets. Okay. So this is the why of my email. I'm, sh I'm showing them an example of a guy who has a very uh, low cost, low stress, high profit business that he, that makes millions per year that he could scale to eight figures if he wanted to. And he lives like this dream lifestyle. Okay. So I'm getting them interested here. Uh, and this is kind of like, I would consider this a story. Uh, so the transition, I'm going to build upon that. I'm going to show you how to transition, how the transition went in this email here. So again, this is where you make a smooth trans transition to connect the meat of the email to the, the call to action. Once you get good at this, you'll be able to connect things that seem completely unrelated. Remember my broccoli and online business example, which is probably a bad example. So it took Mr. X years to get to this point, the same email, by the way, but he always kept it simple and was reaping the rewards to the tune of seven plus figures per year. He focused on a specific problem or a specific market, isolated a painful problem they had and created offers to solve that problem. 
This simplicity is what we focus on in the tribe of prophets. We eliminate all the bloat and laser target the only things that will move you forward. Okay, so now we're tying it. We're transitioning from Mr. X and his cool business to my offer, which is Tribe of Profits, my membership program. Okay, uh, so you can see here we're ta we're turning, we're transitioning from Mr. X and the main point of the email. We're transitioning away from him and putting it back on us now. Now the call to action. So you want to tell them clearly what to do next. It should give them the opportunity to buy something that you have to offer, or at least lead them on the path to doing so. So a good formula to use here is if then. And what I mean by that is, let me show you some examples. If you're looking to start a lean online business selling digital services, then check out my ebook six, my, my ebook six figure drop servicing here. And we link to that. Okay. So you see if then, if you'd like my personal help setting up with help with setting up your LinkedIn lead gen engine, then click here to book a time to chat. Okay. This is for my, my agency consulting services. If you want to see my top five secret niches for 2020, then check out the YouTube video I just posted here. If you'd like us to write emails that sell for you, then book a time, book a call here to see if we can help, right? So if then this works very well in, in most cases, most businesses, very easy to roll out. Uh, you don't always have to use this if then, but if you're struggling trying to figure out where to start, this is a very uh, good proven formula here. Uh, the PS, so the last section. So the PS comes after your signature to restate the meet in a different way and reinvite them to the CTA. So it can also be used to build excitement for something that's coming soon or to promote a complimentary product or service. So I don't always use the PS, but it can be very useful when you mix it in, like maybe let's say every other email or so. So here's some examples. PS, if you're wondering, we don't just cover marketing messages. We got your entire business plan covered. You want to know how to pick the services that are virtually guaranteed to sell or how to craft irresistible offers that convert or how to close a sale. Yep. All that's in there. Click here to book a time to chat. And this is for a coaching program. PS this month, I have a challenge that I'll be rolling out, helping you to start and grow an email list that has the potential to generate hundred K per year. If you're interested in this challenge, click this link and you'll be tagged for any future emails. So this is building excitement for a future product and they click a link that tags them in my email, uh, in my email service provider, which is active campaign. And they get put into a sub list where anytime I email about this specific email list challenge, they're going to get those emails. Okay. So that those are examples of the PS. All right. So now let's talk about 15 rapid fire tips for writing compelling emails that sell. We talked about the formula. Now I want to give you some rapid fire tips to really help you spruce up and make write more compelling emails that sell. So tip number one, write to one person. Don't say you guys don't say anything that implies that you're speaking to a large audience, right? Make it focused on one person and people we're just as human beings are just naturally selfish, right? Whenever someone I read an email and they say you guys, or it sounds like it's speaking to an audience, I kind of tune that email out or I just don't even read it. So uh, don't say anything that implies that you're speaking to an audience, even though people know that they're on an email list, they like to feel like they're being spoken to directly. Like you're speaking to one person. Number two, write like you talk. And I learned this from Ben Settle and Matt Fury. They say, write, talk, talk, write. It should read like a normal conversation, right? So what I do is I'll type on my email, maybe like half or so, and then I'll start reading it aloud and making sure that it reads like a normal conversation, like things that I would actually say in a conversation. And if it doesn't, if I'm using words that I would not normally use, or if I'm using phrases that are too long or words that are too big, I just take them out, right? So it should read like a normal conversation, right? Like you talk. Number three, one big idea or one big point in each email. Now, if you're following the three things, the, the who, the why, the what in every email, you should be good to go, but you want to pick one idea and focus only on that. You don't want to mix a bunch of different things together, right? So if, if, if I go back to my LinkedIn email example, can you imagine if I talked about how to get clients with LinkedIn and Facebook ads and email all in one email? It would be just, it's just overwhelming, right? So you want to have one big idea or one big point in each email. Number four, read it out loud. Better yet, give it to your partner. If you have a partner or, or your kids or a kid and have them read it out loud. If you're just getting started, right? You're going to spot the rough patches because they're going to have a hard time reading through certain areas. And then you can trim it down from there, which leads me to number five, which is trim the fat. So you want to say more with less. Email, the great thing about email is you don't have to write these really long novels. You don't have to write like 2000 word behemoths. You don't have to write these huge long guides. Most of my emails are within the 200 to 600 word um, length, sometimes less than that. Sometimes I write like 100 word emails or 150 words. 
So email, the, the best thing about it, it's, it's very conversational. It's very easy going. They're not long at all. It doesn't take long to write these. So say more with less. And as long as you're, you know, you're writing to one person, you're writing like your talk, you're being conversational and you're following the formula, you're gonna be good to go. It's not about writing longer emails. It's about getting the point across with actually as few words as you can. Number six is to use power words. You know, words like shocking, discovered, reveal, like those are examples of power words. They really hit hard, right? So remove any unnecessary adjectives and adverbs. You wanna use power words and verbs and nouns instead. And those make your, your copy a lot stronger and punchier. Number seven, and this is a big one, give the appetizer, not the main course. So you wanna think of your email like the appetizer. If you're going out for like a full course meal, and you're, you're getting your first dish, the email is the appetizer. And so many people make the mistake of they, they cram all of this information into their email and they solve the problem for the person in the email and the person doesn't buy their product as a result, right? They think they can just do it on their own. So you wanna think of your email as the appetizer and the main course is they have to, they have to buy your product or your service to get the main course, right? That's what the goal of the email is. The, the goal of the email is not to solve their problem and make them not buy your stuff, it's to get sales, right? And the way you do that, is you treat your email like the appetizer and not giving them the entire thing. Number eight is fourth grade approved. So I have an app called Hemingway. I think it was $20 for a lifetime license when I first bought it. And basically what it does is you can type out your, I type out all my emails in Hemingway and it grades, it gives you a grade school level of your writing. And most of my emails are in the third grade level and at the highest they're usually around fourth grade, but usually at the third grade level. And that, that's not to say that you're, you're dumbing anything down. It's just easy to read. It flows nicely. And you wanna to try to stick at a fourth grade level or less if you're using that Hemingway app. That doesn't mean your audience is dumb, right? It just means that your, your writing is very clear and easy to read. And that's what you want. If, if someone's confused, they're not gonna buy. If they can't understand what you're saying, they're not gonna buy. If you're making them feel dumb, like you're using big words that they don't understand, they're definitely not gonna buy, right? So you wanna have it fourth grade approved level or less if you're using Hemingway app. It might actually be free now if you check it out. Number nine is don't hide in the PS. And people are so afraid to plug their product and service. If your product or service can actually truly help somebody, do not be afraid to plug it in every email. Just as the call to action, plug your product or your service. Now, can you imagine if you went to a doctor, right? And you had debilitating back pain, like really bad back pain. And you went to the doctor and the doctor's like, you know, I have the solution to your back pain, but I wanna send you 20 free checkups first. I wanna give you value first, right? I don't wanna pitch you. I'm just gonna, I wanna give you value. What would you tell the doctor? I would tell him, give me that damn solution right now, right? Like I need it right now, so give it to me. So that's what you wanna offer. Give, give your customer every opportunity to buy in every email. If you have a good product or service that actually helps people, right? Don't be afraid, don't hide in the PS. Have it as your call to action at the bottom of every email. Number 10 is to be clear in your CTA. Make it clear exactly what to do next and have one main CTA only, right? Don't send people to five different blog articles or like to a blog article and a video and to book a call and to buy a product. Have one main primary CTA in each of your emails. Number 11 is to grab them with your first line, with your lead, right? So one way you can do this is starting in the middle of a story and having that high drama built in, that tension, or asking a question. Those are great ways to get them engaged with your first line, with your lead. Number 12, use transitions to pre-frame the call to action, the CTA. So the connection from the meat, the body of your email, to the CTA, it should feel natural, right? You're gonna get better at this over time, but connecting, like I said before, connecting two, you'll be able to connect two completely unrelated things and make it feel like it's completely natural, like it totally makes sense. Uh, and that's when the breakthroughs happen. When you can actually do that, you'll make a lot more sales because you're gonna give your, your audience and your list that aha moment. And sorry for the noise, this is a plane flying over right now. Tip number 13, show personality. So don't be afraid to be controversial. Don't be afraid to have a strong opinion on something and within reason, of course, right? Don't insult people like on purpose just to go out of your way to do it. But if you have a strong opinion or something or on something or a stance, like don't be afraid to share it. Show them who you are, right? Just show your personality and don't be afraid. Like don't 
try to stay within the confines of like never uh, saying anything controversial and being all a like cookie cutter, right? The people that go out of their way and have opinions and are sometimes controversial, those are the people with the, the strongest, most rabid audiences, right? The most engaged lists. And Ben Settle is a great example of that. He says some, some pretty controversial stuff. Number 14, tip 14 is to keep an inspo file, an inspiration file. You never know when a good story or some email idea is gonna hit you, right? So I just have on my phone, my iPhone, I have the notes app. And anytime I have a, an email idea, I have a certain document, I just write the email idea in there. You wanna keep a file for them. So I never, I'm never gonna run out of email ideas because every day something new happens. I've written an email about a pen before, buying a new pen. So you can turn anything into an email. And that's another thing that I love about email. You can turn any, any story or anything that happens to you, good or bad, into an email. Uh, tip number 15 is done is better than perfect. So you're gonna get better over time. Money loves speed, so just get it done, right? Just focus on sending out an email every day, especially if you already have a list of people. Send out an email every day, just imperfect action, send out an email, and over time you'll get better at this and better at this, and you're gonna make more and more money. Your list is gonna continue growing, you're gonna build that relationship, you'll make more sales, and you're gonna get better at actually sending out and writing these emails faster and quicker and, and easier. Now, lastly, let's talk about how to get free email copywriting lessons. The best way to get free email copywriting lessons, you'll probably guess what this is, is to get on people's list and watch what they're doing, right? There's nothing stopping you from going to someone's site and signing up for their, their free newsletter, right? So sign up for their free newsletter, go to these sites, these well-known marketers or these brands and see what they're doing. And even better, buy their stuff. Just see what they send to their customers and you'll get different sequences being a customer than you would just being on their free list. So I like to go and do my research. I'll buy people's products just to see what they send out. I'll stay on their list for free for a little while to see what emails I get that warm me up to becoming a customer. And then usually after a few weeks, I go and buy something. So that is the best way to do market research and figure out what's working and get a free lesson on email copywriting. You're gonna get these great emails that come into your inbox that you can read and consume and learn from. Uh, and what, what's what been recommended before from a guy named Ian Stanley, he always recommends hand copying emails out. And that kind of creates the psychological imprint where you start to understand the copy better than if you were to just read it. So I did that in the beginning. I actually hand copied Ian Stanley and uh, Ben Settle's emails to get better at that. And it, it really did help. So that's, that's an easy way to get better at your copy is every day, you know, spend 30 minutes or so handwriting and hand copying out other people's emails that are successful at email marketing. So a few of my favorite lists, Ben Settle, of course, I've mentioned him a bunch of times now. He's had a huge impact on the way that I write uh, email copy, especially. Ian Stanley has a great list as well. He's an amazing storyteller. Uh, I love his, his emails that he sends out that are story-based. Chris Orzakowski has really solid stuff on e-commerce and automated email campaigns. Matt Fury, uh, I think this is who Ben Settle learned from, and he he has both a marketing brand and he has like a fitness company as well. So he is, if you wanna see both the fitness side and the marketing side, you get on his list, mattfury.com. Justin Brooke is the founder of AdSkills, is a paid traffic guy, but also a fantastic email copywriter, email marketer. Noah Kagan is the founder of sumo.com. The It's like an app marketplace. You've probably heard of it before. Stefan Georgi, I think he is one of the top copywriters in the world right now. Over 700 million grossed from his copy. He might be uh, number two behind a guy named Craig Clemens, but he has a great list as well. Great storyteller. Justin Goff, uh, this is, he's, a, he's, a, he's also a copywriter. He's Stefan Georgi's par uh, partner in their, they have a mastermind group. And he has really good direct response style copy in his emails. And of course mine, off of my email list, right? Buy one of my products, my, my ebook or whatever it is, uh, and you'll get my emails. So this is a few of my favorite lists. If you get on these lists and you study these people and study what they do, 30 days, if you just hand copy these people's emails, and of course hand copy, model, don't just copy and paste and steal and send it out to your list like a shithead. Uh, but if you do that, you hand copy and you study these lists, you are gonna get better at email copywriting. There's no doubt about it after 30 days. So model after what successful marketers are doing, but do not steal, do not be that person, okay? Go out and write your first email. 
then let me know you did it in the Email Marketing Rainmakers Facebook group. I wanna hear you, uh, after you write your first email, just post in the Facebook group that you wrote, that you wrote your first email, feel free to post it in there as well. Uh, I wanna get you guys going on this train, get the momentum rolling on this. So a recap of what we covered, this is a longer one. Talked about the three things you must know before writing any email, the who, the why, and the what, the six step formula for writing emails that sell, the 15 rapid fire tips for writing compelling emails that sell, and then how to get free email copywriting lessons by signing up for those lists, studying what they're doing, hand copying some people's emails and looking at the structure and creating that psychological imprint in your mind when you, when you start doing that, where you get better at copy, start understanding it better. So next week is the last video in the series, how to replace your job and make $3,500 a month or more writing emails for clients. And this is how you do it as a service, as a done for you service for clients. So that's coming next week. And again, make sure you join my Facebook group, go to emailrainmaker.com. That'll take you directly to the Facebook group where you can join. It's a free group right now. It's a private group. And we're going to be talking about all things email marketing in that group. So that's it for this video. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, please comment below and let me know. And I will see you in the next one.